additive manufacturing, 3D printing for a production environment. Well, NTD CNC have travelled to Brown and Holmes in Tamworth to investigate further um, this new technology that you've made a huge investment in. Now, Mick, why have you invested in two Stratasys 3D printers here at Brown and Holmes? The main reason we invested in these machines was to enhance our capabilities and improve the solutions that we could offer to our customers. Is this really for the bespoke fixtures that you're offering? Is this the main reason? It isn't the main reason, but um, that was the initial thoughts that that's why we'd invest in that, to, to add functionality to our fixtures. But we can also print individual parts. We can, we can offer it as a subcontract service, but we can also make hybrid fixtures. We can make totally 3D printed parts, assemblies. So it, it gives us a whole range of opportunities that we didn't have before. So just to clarify, you're not using this technology for... Uh, prototyping this is for production only this is yeah 100 percent all of the parts that we print go on to products that we sell to support our customers definitely so now having this new capability of 3d printing you know how has it changed the way in which you can design and manufacture fixtures because you're not only manufacturing fixtures are you Mick you're designing them as well that's right yeah it gives our designers a whole new level of freedom to design far more complex parts that they would not have been able to produce using conventional methods of manufacture so the guys in the design team that are getting their heads around a whole new range of possibilities and functions essentially if they can model it we can manufacture it now so the materials, are they an issue? Do they restrict you in any way? No, the materials have offered uh, more possibilities as well because the range of materials, approximately 17 across the two machines, have given us more opportunity for strong materials, lighter materials, thermally stable materials. So, no, the materials have added to our capabilities for sure. Also, heat resistant materials. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've already printed a number of parts that the end use involves them being in a heated environment that the parts are stable in that sort of environment. So yeah, it's, it's not a problem. And how have you found the Stratasys 3D printers to use? They're your first investment in, into this arena? Yeah, we looked at a number of manufacturers of 3D printers and the Stratasys machines have performed superbly and, and we're really pleased with the decision that we made to go with those guys. Now, I would imagine one of your limitations would be your capacity, the size of components that you can print. What capacity have you actually got here? On the bigger machine, it's approximately 16 inches cubed, so we can print a single part in that sort of... Um, envelope but we can also print smaller parts and then join them together in assemblies so whilst it is a bit of a restriction it's a quite a large capacity machine the 450 um, so we can print parts up to that envelope but then bolt parts together we can glue parts together there's a whole whole range of possibilities to make parts that are actually bigger than the envelope in the machine is the time a problem, how long it takes to make the part? Is that a problem for you? No, the time isn't an issue at all. I mean, the guys went away on Easter holidays, so for four days the company's on shutdown. For three of those days, this 450 machine was running and printing parts with nobody here on site. So it actually adds to our capacity with, with no human intervention. So. so you're getting a lot of unmanned running from the product. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of the time we set the printer going in the day, it prints overnight, we change jobs over in the morning and then it'll print again the next day and overnight. Some of the jobs, if the tray's full, and depending on the complexity and the volume of the parts, it can take three days to complete a, a complete tray. I mean, some of these parts, they were done across two trays, so th there's, there's lots of capabilities without having uh, operators involved all the time. Now you mentioned complexity of parts, now I'm going to pick a part up here. Now there's certain parts that you're designing that you wouldn't have designed in this way if you were machining them um, on, on you know, your CNC machine. So this is allowing you now to really think out of the box and design things in, in a totally different manner. Yeah, as you quite correctly say, you would have never designed that part in that way if it was to be conventionally machined. So it gives the designers the freedom and the ability to make 
more complex parts, which at the end of the day give a, a simpler solution to the customer. Maybe even reduce the number of parts in an assembly because you can produce one part that's far more complicated. Now, you mentioned hybrid. Now, this is quite interesting. So basically, you're using traditional methods of fixture manufacturing um, such as, as the one behind you but you're incorporating 3D printed parts to this but a nice example as well is, is the parts behind you here are part of a large assembly which fix, fits onto um, a base um, which it gets built on that's still got manufactured in a traditional manner and some of the actual 3D printed parts where they need to be 3D printed they can but you can still incorporate hardened bushes etc so you're getting the best of both worlds. That's quite true, yeah. There's, there's not a job yet that hasn't been of that nature that we've done. So all of the jobs that we've produced have had conventionally manufactured parts, along with printed parts, along with standard parts that just bolt either to the printed parts or to the conventional machine parts, yes. And, and what I love is the, is the heat resistant parts as well. I mean, can you explain what application this is for to a certain degree? I know it's got a, a, an NDI on this part, but the, the, these segments are heat resistant for a reason. Yeah, yeah, these parts are, are manufactured out of a material called Ultem, which is thermally stable. So it needs to, in its final operation, it needs to go into a curing oven, which the temperature of that curing oven is about 170 degrees. So these parts are thermally stable above that temperature so there's no problems with expansion or anything and it's perfectly safe to use at that level of temperature yeah now is it safe to say that the 3d printers will never remove all of your cutting machines your metal removal machines however would you say it's safe to say that they are definitely part of the future here at brown and homes yeah there's there's no doubt about that i mean our sort of capacity within the additive market is only going to grow so now now that we've got on board with this technology it's it's only going to be incorporated more in our solutions and as the materials develop more which strategists they're constantly developing new materials and those materials will become available on these machines and it'll open up more capabilities for us so yeah it's definitely going to be part of it but as you quite correctly say it won't replace conventional machining um, some parts are far more suited to conventional machining whereas other parts would can only be produced by 3d printing so the two work well together